Hi, this is Mike Brown, owner of Death Wish Coffee Company. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast. I love Java, sweet and high. Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D-Man. Welcome everybody to Fueled by Deathcast. It is episode 110. That's an 11 with a zero at the end, Jeffrey. This guy is up on his numbers. <laughs> uh, as always, I am the incredible Jeff. And I am the amazing D-Man. And we'd love it if you followed us on social media. First and foremost, for us personally, it's really easy. I am at Jeff Wish Coffee. And I am at Death Wish Dustin. And please follow the show on social media as well, at Fueled by Deathcast on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I'm um, trying to, you know, really create a cool little space over there. Um, I'm having the most luck with Instagram so far. Oh, yeah. Um, because I just think it's, I think it's a, a platform that's just made for social posting. In this that, respect. that, and you know, as a podcast, as you know, an audio thing, getting the the visual stimulation behind it with something like Instagram really kind of pumps it up a notch. Totally, but I mean, Facebook and Twitter as well. Whatever, whatever's your poison, please follow us over there. We'd love to have your you as fans and friends. Do you know what my poison is, Jeff? <laughs> what is it? It's Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not using social media to follow uh, our hero our god our god at real christian our, sa- our savior please. the the original christian <laughs> please <laughs> please do that because we sure do love christian slater and we want to we want people to follow him like we do in fact i it was great last week when we said it as usual that hey will you go follow christian slater he made a post yeah i know i saw that <laughs> i, I like, saw oh he god, made a post because it's few and far between from him on social media yeah. <laughs> christian slater made a post and jeff and i had a party about it yes we yes, had we um tacos mm. and um ceviche yes yes <laughs> <that's> so, a, <laughs> it's so christian that, slater's it, favorite it's foods christian slater's favorite food. <laughs> um, i do want to thank our good friend Brock Power. BrockFox.com. He's the voice actor on this show and a thousand voices out there in the world. Go follow him on social media, Brock Fox, across all platforms, including BrockVox.com. He's doing some great stuff. Uh, we talked about recently how his show on Disney Channel, Milo's Murphy's Law, had a crossover with Phineas and Ferb, did very well, and it just premiered a brand new episode where this is the greatest thing about being a voice actor. I saw Brock post this the other day that he portrayed a space llama in this scene next to a human portrayed or voiced by Mark Hamill. Oh. <laughs> so what an inc- what an incredible weird life Brock lives. <laughs> Isn't the space llama the thing that Mark Hamill cuts open to survive during a winter storm? <laughs> you picked it up. Oh my god. It's a tauntaun, but yeah, it's close. That's really funny. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you think that's what they were going for? I think so. Or you think it's just a coincidence? No, it's just a coincidence. But <laughs> I think it's a cool coincidence. But please follow Brock, and uh, you guys will be able to see all sorts of cool stuff like him doing that. And uh, if you guys are following the show, you guys are listening to Fuel by Deathcast. Obviously, every single week on Thursday, we come out with our full episode with a special guest that we love to ask the question, what fuels you? And sometimes we get you know guests back on. This, this week, we've got one of each, which is going to be great. Ooh. But um, we've also started putting out mini episodes every week, so more content for you guys to consume we, because we really do love to podcast. So every Sunday now, you can catch us a mini episode of our science science segment where we talk about something cool that's happening in the science universe and then on Tuesday we recap our roast from the week before and both of those can be found every single week on the fueled by death show did you know that we do a show as well as a podcast no I didn't Jeff (laughs) tell me all about it every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time head on over to the Death Wish Coffee Company Facebook page and you can see us bring a a brand new show to you every single week. We do the science segment, the roast segment. We have a lot more fun. We give you some some 
really cool updates on Death Wish Coffee stuff. We do some random things. Dustin thinks that he's going to kill me almost every other episode. Do I? I never noticed. I mean, I know I feel that way, but I didn't realize I say it out loud so much. Well, we have a lot of fun over there, and um, we're live in the comments. You even get a chance to win a mug every single week. Not this mug. Not that mug, but really cool mugs. my mug. Really cool stuff over there. So every single week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, over on the Death Wish Coffee Company Facebook page. You can find us on top of all the podcast content that we give you. Secret code unlocked. Discount of death. Well, if you haven't gotten the notification yet, we have one discount code to rule them all, and it is the best discount code. It is discount of death. All one word, discount of death. And you can use that at any point to get 12% off of anything on deathwishcoffee.com. Uh, we got a lot of cool things going. There's a lot of good mugs. A lot more mugs were being released. Uh, and I mean, you know, it's the beginning of a new year and we've got some really cool things coming. So you're going to want to keep this discount code in your back pocket at all times. 12% off, especially if you're trying to get that 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 sweet, sweet free shipping at $50 uh, on the by purchasing fifty dollars or more on the website, twelve mm-hmm. percent. That's a nice, nice discount. Well, you think that might knock you under the the fifty dollars? No, you mark. just you, you you push it a you, little bit. You buy a few more things. Yeah, and you get those for free because of the twelve percent off. Come on, you guys know how to work an online you store, know right? How to work it? Twelve percent off, discounted death, all one word, forever. Use it every single purchase on deathwishcoffee dot com. All right, D man, this week is a double dose of awesome. Um, we, on our incredible adventure to Los Angeles last year, we rented a car and we drove down the coast to San Diego. That was a beautiful drive, by the way. Beautiful. I made sure to um, get, make sure that our route took Route 1 a little bit so you could yep. see the ocean as we were driving It was by. beautiful. We saw helicopters landing and yeah, shit. Yeah, so cool. And um, we went to 10th Planet in Poway, South San Diego, and we met up with UFC fighter and former Marine Liz Carmouche. And she's back for the second time on the podcast on this episode. And it was really cool because the first time we did it over the phone, Mm -hmm. this time was in person. We got to talk to her about what's been going on with her career since the last time we talked to her last season. And you actually got to sit in on some of her classes, which... Going in, <laughs> Dustin, you know, if you guys follow him on social media, you know he's he's in the gym a lot. You are very confident in in your 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 skills. Athletic prowess. Yes, in your skills. About ten minutes out of Liz like like starting to train you, I could see it in your face being like uh oh. <laughs> oh sh- it was oh shit. It was oh shit. I knew it was oh shit because I think she saw the confidence in my face and kicked it up ten more yeah. notches. And I mean, this was like a half an hour strength and conditioning class. Yep. And I was like, oh, it's a half an hour. I do hour and a half. I do two yeah. hours a day sometimes. Yeah. This was everything I do in two hours stuffed into a half an hour. Yeah. Remember how sore I was? Yeah. I couldn't even. We went to the zoo the next day yeah. and I, could, I was like waddling around yeah. everywhere. So great. So I'm going to have some of that footage of uh, Dustin doing his best with Liz Carmouche <laughs> on the mats. And it was really cool to talk to her. But not only that, at 10th Planet, we also met up with Sloan Climber. Now, Sloan Climber is a brown belt in Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and an instructor at 10th Planet. Really cool dude. And um, we had met him just before on the internet because he found us through a mutual love of coffee. Yep. And and obviously jujitsu and everything mm-hmm. else, and yeah. it all steamrolled from there. So we got into a conversation with him, and it is such an inspiring conversation to yeah, hear. Yeah, he's, he's got a great backstory, and, you know, this— I don't know anybody who goes at it harder than Sloan. Yeah. I mean, he really, like, injuries doesn't bother him. He just goes. Goes and goes and goes. He's— after it and you can tell you can tell he's got he's got the fire he's got the motivation and he's gathering the skill and this is going to be one of the top dudes in the jujitsu game in the near future totally so first up you're going to hear from sloan climber and then it's the return of liz carmouche this episode on fueled by death cast the fueled by death guest uh starting at the beginning was where I always love to start, okay, and cool. especially with um, people who really get heavy into mixed martial arts or a specific genre of martial arts. And you are jujitsu, right? Yeah, predominantly jujitsu, but I've done a little bit of everything. So where did it start? Why, why, why did you start <clears throat> well, to get into that? Um, 
So growing up, uh, when I was just a little kid, my dad was super involved in mixed martial arts. He was watching boxing and MMA all uh-huh. the time as, as I was a kid growing up. And I learned how to apply a rear naked choke when I was like five years old. Oh, that's cool. You I were... was sleeping my sister's boyfriends as just a youngster. So yeah, yeah, I was always I was always pretty good at that stuff. And um, you know, my dad he uh, he had me around it all the time. So. Um, I didn't really, really take a lot of interest in it until I was about like 15 and, um, I was kind of a wild kid. I was always like getting in fights a lot growing up when I was younger. And, um, I realized that I, I came at a certain point in my life where I, like I figured I didn't really know much about fighting other than like what my dad had shown me in the living room and stuff like that. Right. Um, we actually, We had a little barn in my backyard. I'm from Indiana. So my dad had some mats out there and uh, like it was basically a small weight room as well. He had a heavy bag hanging out there and he would have his buddies come out on the weekends and spar and grapple and everything. And so once I was like 15 or 16, um, I just went out there with him and started training with those guys and I got beat up all the time. They didn't take it easy on me. They didn't care that I was a kid, you know, (laughs) and uh, they treated me like one of them and I slowly but surely I fell in love with it and then um, started hopping around different gyms in Indiana just to get a feel for, you know, different looks and learning different arts from all over the place. And uh, I entered my first grappling tournament when I was 16 years old and wow. I did pretty well and kind of just fell in love with it, man, and ran with it. And then, um, you know, years down the road, <clears throat> uh, my life was kind of at a dead end in Indiana and uh, realized I wasn't re- going anywhere with my life. And so I picked up, moved out here and um, walked into 10th Planet as a broke 22 year old kid. I had I had nothing going for me, you know, and yeah. um, they they saw that I was pretty good. And so they got me to start cleaning the mats and training there for free. And then oh, cool. after a while, I uh, started getting belted by my coach, Richie Boogeyman Martinez, and then Um, yeah, I started teaching there after a while and now I'm one of the instructors and just keep submerging myself further and further into the arts and learning more and more every day, training, teaching, and, uh, yeah, I'm living it up out here. Do you still compete? I still compete a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a few months, but, um, I actually, I had a couple MMA fights back in Indiana and, um, I still love MMA. I haven't, I haven't really had any plans to fight out here yet i'm still training boxing all the time i'm still um you know i'm still working in with our mma team from time to time but my main focus right now is my jujitsu that's what i'm teaching more than anything and um so yeah i'm still competing in a lot of jujitsu and you know i I plan on getting my black belt and running my own school before too long so how old are you now i'm 25 now 25 so you've been out here for about three or so years yes about three years just a little under yeah how do you feel about that giant because everybody thinks about that right they're in a small town somewhere in the middle of the fucking country dude it was uh (laughs) it was tough man what made you come to san diego well so i i knew i wanted to get the fuck out of indiana i was (laughs) sick of it there it was depressing i hated it i hated everything about it yeah so so i just like literally pulled up a map of the u.s and i was like okay well, let's let's just start narrowing things down here. Okay, yeah. I, I want warm weather year round. All right, yep. I, want, I want martial arts to be surrounded by me, mm-hmm. and um, so I figured you know San Diego would be the best spot, and then that's that's just kind of the spot that I picked. And I had an acquaintance. I wouldn't even say he was a friend of mine. He was yeah. a dude that I knew uh, from back home. He was a friend of a friend. Yeah. yeah. And um, I hit him up, gave him a call, and I was, he was living out here, you know, and yeah. I had known him when I was younger and kind of asked him about it a little bit and uh how he liked san diego and he's like dude he's like you can come out here and crash on my couch until you get your own place so i I drove out here on a whim and then i got lucky after like 10 days got my own apartment and um been living out here ever since and yeah so i just work full time at the gym now and oh cool yeah it's a good time man dude i'll tell you what this is my first time in san diego yeah it is so fucking beautiful here dude Mm -hmm. it is i can't like today is my first day my only day in san diego yeah yeah what was the name of the place um uh uh, no uh the little island Uh, off oh uh coronado that's it yeah yeah. my girlfriend used to live there yeah holy crap it's beautiful it is it's awesome and like i've seen a lot of places like it you know out in key west and stuff like that but it's never been 
as cool as what I've seen in for San sure. Diego. Yeah, Coronado's beautiful. And yeah. you must love it out here, man. Hell yeah, that dude. Makes... Yeah, I'm, it's life's a kung fu movie now, man. I'm fucking living <laughs> it up, dude. It sounds like Hell it. yeah, dude. It's a it's a good time, man. All I do is I compete, I train, I teach martial arts, and uh, yeah, living it up. So, so if this is your kung fu movie, where does it go? I don't know, man. We'll see where it takes me. I, like I said, I want to open my own jujitsu school eventually. Yeah. That's uh, that's the plan, you know yeah. what I mean? That's what I want to do in the long run. And, you know, I, I like helping people and this is the best way to express myself. And I, I see it change people's lives every day. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I see people come into the gym and, you know, they're fat and out of shape and they're miserable. And then, you know, three months goes by, six months goes by. And next thing you know, they're like, they're starting to gain some confidence. They're coming into the gym with a smile. They're being more talkative and yeah. they're slimming down you know they're yeah. starting to get good at this thing I, out of nowhere they may have went their whole lives without being good at anything yeah. you know? and then suddenly they're picking something up and they're, they they're enjoying it murdering it's, people <laughs> yeah exactly it's it, there's nothing like it it's like no. you get look you can get good at basketball and that that'll feel pretty good you know yeah. to yeah. know how, you, how to move around and dribble a ball but like when you know how to strangle somebody, it's, <laughs> there's something different about that. Yeah. You're like, oh, I have this person's in life DNA, is in my man. hand. It's yeah. a, it, things start to light up. It's and... caveman shit, all yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it is. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. That's yep. so cool. I mean, that, that's something I was talking to Liz about before the class. Just like, that's one of the things I love most about being in a jujitsu school is watching the mostly kids, right? You yeah, see yeah. these like kids just getting into high school. That's uh -huh. like, which is love, the most awkward time of your life. Life, right? For sure, you're yeah. Starting to like, you're starting to have feelings for girls, and uh -huh. like, hey, but you're like really awkward and nerdy, and yeah. you don't know how to talk to people. <clears throat> and and I see these kids coming to the jujitsu class, and they, they're really awkward at first, but you see them progress after a year, two years, three years, yeah, yeah. and they're killers. Uh -huh. They're kill and they not like they're acting like killers, but they're just totally different. They're themselves. It's not like they're totally different yeah. people. They they get to open up. They're 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 comfortable with themselves. Yeah, for is sure. What it is. Uh -huh. When did that happen? That, that must have happened for you at some point. Yes, right? it did. Well, um, it happened for me when I was about 16, I think. You yeah. know, once I once I really start like like I said, I grew up around martial arts, but I didn't really train martial arts other yeah, than like yeah. what my dad showed me in the living room. Yeah. And then yeah. Once I started training with him and uh, his buddies in the barn when I was like 15, 16 years old and I started to kind of learn some shit, you know. It's I I, I started to feel this this confidence in myself, you know what I mean, on a day to day basis. I wasn't like nervous of, of, uh, of like the older guys at school or anything, yeah. you know what I mean. I felt I felt like I could talk to people easier, and um, you know, at first maybe it was. Uh, Maybe it wasn't a good thing. My dad used to always say, he's like, man, I feel like I'm creating a monster because like I said, I was running around with the wrong kids yeah. when I was in high school and I didn't know myself. I didn't, you know what I mean? I was yeah. still trying to find myself. Like you right. said, yeah. I didn't know like what, uh, what the right path was, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I was, I was, I was hanging out with, you know, the wrong kids, fucking druggies and stuff, you know, and, um, like getting into it with people all the time. And then, uh, I was using my martial arts, like maybe not for, for uh, good reasons Easily. at first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was getting in fights and beating yeah. people's asses yeah. all yeah. at <laughs> first, <laughs> but then slowly, but surely I kind of, I pulled myself out of that, especially after I moved out here and yeah. man, like, uh, people back home, they tell me, they're like, you're a completely different person, what you were yeah. five, six years ago. And, yeah. and I am, I've, I'm a completely different human being now. I've just, you know, I've, I've came into my own. I've learned to use this as something positive and I, I have a way out of, you know, of, of, how I was raised and yeah. the, the way that I was living back home. Now I'm I'm doing something good with myself and yeah. from martial arts. So it's well, really you, cool. you mentioned something about being on the right path, but I think part of being on the right path is at some point being on the wrong path. Yeah, right? yeah. Just like every good movie, it starts for off sure. With this, with the, everything's down in the, the dirt hero's right? journey. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. hero's journey. That's yeah. that's part of the path, and I think uh -huh. you learn a lot from that area. And I guess. Uh, if anything, it's just a message to the people who are on that wrong path. Uh -huh. Like, you're not on the wrong path. You just, you're just learning more, and you just need to make the the corrections. But you always look back to that and go, oh, "See, that was then when I was messing up doing drugs." For real, dude. Yeah. yeah, I think back when I was like 19 years old and like all the stupid stuff I was doing. I'm just like, geez, like, but it made me who I am now. You know what I mean? I learned from it, and I, I 
like I had to go through those things to get to where I am now. Sometimes, if I hadn't have gone through that yeah, stuff, yeah. who knows, I may have settled for a mediocre life. If I had yeah. never hung out with the wrong people, never got into the wrong shit, right. maybe I wouldn't have been pushed to that, that rock bottom low point to yep. where to where I decided, fuck it, I'm moving. I'm yeah. getting out of here, you know yeah. what I mean? And maybe I would have just settled for just working in a warehouse or being a correctional officer because yeah. I actually did that for a, a small stint until I moved out here. Yeah. Wow. Um, I could have stayed there and made that my full-time job, but right. I was just, I hated my life, man, and I didn't like the people that I was surrounding myself with and where my life was headed, so I, I had to had to do something different. I knew I knew I wanted martial arts to be my life, not yeah. just a part of it, but my life, you know that's what I mean? Awesome. That's and what it is now. Jiu-Jitsu is probably the best part to, the best martial art to be a part of right now. It's, yeah. The industry is growing immensely. All these jiu-jitsu tournaments Rapidly. are popping up. Mm -hmm. uh, we see EBI and, and combat jiu-jitsu yeah. and stuff like that. Where do you see everything going with the jiu-jitsu world and the competitive world? I only see it growing from yeah. here, man. I think that uh, it's still, I say this all the time, I think that it's still in its baby stages. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is. Jiu-jitsu became popular um, back in the 93 when Hoist Gracie started, you know, choking the shit out of guys in the UFC, you know. Guys and that's, like three times his size. Yeah. Exactly. And that's when it, it uh, became a thing in, in yeah. the U.S., you know. And people yeah. are like, oh, my gosh, there's this art that n none of us have known about. And then slowly but surely, jiu-jitsu schools started popping up and more and more people got their black belts. And now yeah. you're seeing jiu-jitsu schools all over the place. Yeah. And I only see it growing from here, man. I think that it's just going to keep getting better and better yeah and i think the hang-up point for a while was that for a spectator it might not have been that interesting to watch because like you know a lot of the first tournaments especially when you see like point tournaments looks like a fucking hugging match exactly right? yeah but if you're trying to hold each other and you down. know jujitsu and love jujitsu it's very entertaining because exactly. you know what's coming up yeah but i think what we're seeing with stuff like ebi and the submission only tournaments with the overtime and in, in, in dangerous positions and stuff like that yes it makes it so entertaining for sure man you're seeing guys especially combat jujitsu right? yes that is that's even more exciting <laughs> yeah, you know what i mean you're seeing them slapping each other, other. Yeah. <laughs> exactly it's so it's cool. awesome man and like you know uh, it's like we just said, it's in our DNA to, to fight and people like seeing fighting. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's people, anytime there's a fight, people surround themselves. What was that? I think Dana White said something, um, one time about like, there can be a, a football, baseball and basketball game going on in the same area. But if a fight breaks out in the crowd, everybody's going to watch that. Yeah, even, you know the what I mean? even the cameras go from the action on the field to the fight in the exactly. crowd. Yeah. So any kind of combat sport, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, just a matter of uh popularizing it you know what i mean and it's just going to keep growing and there's more money involved in jujitsu now and i i only see that growing as well you know what i mean yeah. the same with like the ufc you know back back in the early 90s uh someone would have laughed if there was like you know m like millions of dollars on the line for a fight but now you're seeing big name fighters actually make that money yeah, yeah. it's just like like boxing you know boxing's been around for so long all those big name fighters are making millions of dollars and then you know it's getting that way with mma now and then yeah. i think slowly but surely it's gonna become that way with jujitsu too you know yeah. might might take another 10 or 20 years but yeah. i do believe that someday it's gonna it's gonna become that popular well there'll there'll be that much money involved in yeah well just so. the amount of growth that's happened in 10 years is Really, really oh, it's intense. it's crazy. Can you imagine ten years from now. I know, man. It's it's a completely different world now than what it was back in two thousand eight. You yeah, know what I mean, it's it's just a it's a completely different ball game it's now. Exciting. So especially being it's part cool. of it, it's super exciting and seeing For guys sure. like you come up and like yeah be a part of it. Do you have any interest in combat jujitsu, by the way? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I uh, I would like to compete in it. My coach um, talked to me about we th we thought there was going to be a trials for um, the EBI. The uh, middleweight. CJJ middleweight. The, and the that, one in Burbank that's that, coming up. Yeah, that would yeah. be my weight class. I don't. They ended up not having a trials for it, but I was going to be in it if they did. And I was super stoked for it. I was oh, like, oh, shit, man. that'll be dope, man. So um, that's honestly more my style because back in Indiana when I first started training, we never just did jujitsu. We did ground and pound. That, yeah. was, that was when we were grappling, we were punching each other, too. Mm -hmm. We weren't just... We weren't just grappling, right, never. Right. We were always uh, involving strikes all the time. Yeah. So that's more natural for me. My uh, my grappling is more based for fighting and for um, combat. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of these new school grapplers who 
They like to sit on their asses and butt scoot, it's and you practical. know what I mean? And it's it's not practical In for fighting. Life, yeah. It's okay if you just want to be a, a strictly submission grappler and you just want to do sport jujitsu, that's okay. Yeah. But if there's strikes involved, even if it's Palm strikes, man, you're gonna be in a world of trouble if you decide to compete in that well, as a Well, it just butt scooter, highlights you know? uh, any openings that are happening within the match where like, like you said, dudes can scoot on their butt or they'll, they'll dedicate themselves to one leg and leave themselves open for strikes. Yeah. As soon as you put a bitch slap in there. Yeah, the yeah, you get a palm strike in there and yeah. it changes the whole game, man. And you've, you, we've already seen it, you know what I yeah. mean? You watch watch CJJ World, it's happened multiple times in there and um, some of the combat jiu-jitsu matches in EBI and um, you know, it's only gonna continue to happen and prove itself more and more and people are gonna have to continue to change their game. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about jiu-jitsu, I feel like, is it's constantly, evol it's just a, it's always evolving. Yeah. yeah. There's a never there's never a stop to it, you know. You're always having to change your game. And then once people start uh, changing their game just for this CJJ and as that grows, then guys are going to get sneaky and go back to the leg locks and go back to the butt scooting and stuff and maybe, yeah. you know what I mean? And and it might work again. Everything works, you know, in, yeah. in the right time and in the right moment, you yeah. know. So it's like it's just always a constant evolution. It's it's crazy, man, but Yeah. Do you see yourself getting back into mixed martial arts at all? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Someday, um, I, I could see myself fighting again. I don't like. I'm not gonna put a time or a date right. on it. But I love fighting. I mean, that's why I got into this. I. It's always just excited me. So, um, I like striking just as much as I love jujitsu. And yeah. Um, I don't train it quite as much as I do jujitsu. I'm training jujitsu six days a week, twice yeah. a day. Well, it most sounds of the like time, you fell in but, love. Yeah, I did. You know, yeah. I, I just became an addict once, especially once I moved out here. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I just started training all the time. I had nothing better to do. Yeah. I came yeah. out here by myself and um, just uh, I was cleaning those mats to train for free. So I was like, I'm going to take advantage of this. I was training all the time, man. And I was just, uh, you know, and slowly but surely I, I realized it was, it was my life. You know, it was like yeah. I was at the gym all the time. And then yeah. they were like, well, Shit, this kid's here all the time. I guess we'll fucking hire him. He's pretty good, so you know, I, I guess we'll keep him around. So I got lucky, man. I got really lucky. Yeah. But. And you're a purple belt now. Yeah, I'm a purple That's belt. Cool, yeah, man. Uh huh. When'd so, you get your When'd you get your purple belt? I got it. Uh, it was November. 29th of 2016, I think. All right. I, I feel like I can. So you're remember deep this. into your purple belt. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know when I'll get my brown, but it's probably always, sooner than later. It's always super subjective, right? Yeah, it is. You know, it's like my coach. He, he, uh, he likes all of his students to compete, you know? And so I think he just probably wants me to get a few more competitions in as a purple belt, which yeah. I'm okay with that. And you know? I find so. if your coach likes you, it usually takes longer. Exactly. He wants, <laughs> and he's even told me that before. He told me, he was telling me that as a blue belt. He was like, hey, he was like, I know you've been tapping these black belts, but uh, I'm still going to keep you as a blue belt because I want you to be the baddest fucking blue belt in the world. And yeah. Then I'll give you your purple belt. I remember him saying that <laughs> to awesome. me. So I was like, okay, cool. Good and coach. Got my purple belt. And then, um, you know, he, I think he just wants the same thing for that belt and then brown belt and yeah. black belt. You By know the time I mean? you get you your just, black belt, you're just going to be a straight up assassin. Yeah, man. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, there, and, you know, I would much rather be the, the purple belt who's beating higher belts rather than yeah. the higher belt who's getting beat by right. a lower belt you know what i mean right. yeah. that's 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 a shitty feeling and there are guys out there who they just it, it's not their fault but their coach gave them their their brown or their black belt way too early yep. and, and you know they're the ones catching the shit in for yeah. it you know what i mean they're going into competitions with you know like a purple belt and then getting tapped and right it's like you know they may have just gotten belted a little too soon so. but i feel like in the jujitsu world it's not odd to see a purple belt tap a black belt no it's not i mean it, it it's it's common it's I mean, very it happens common. all the time i mean yeah. that's a beautiful thing beautiful thing about jujitsu yeah anything can happen yeah uh -huh. and uh a purple belt's not stupid if yeah there, if there's an opening and everybody will leave an opening at some point it, it a happens. purple belt will know how to take advantage of yeah that. yeah and something i've learned over time is like the belts are just collars man like yeah. uh, you know when i first got like my blue belt and i was starting to train around more and more black belts richie my coach he was starting to take me with him to other gyms to cross train and stuff and i'd be like oh shit, this guy's a black belt oh no yeah. but then like once i grab a hold of him i'd be like 
oh, he's just another grappler. It's yep. just yeah. because he's a black belt. It's like I would I would put them on this pedestal in yep. my head, like, oh shit, this guy's way better than me. He has to be. He has a black belt. That's not true. He's just he's just another grappler. Yeah. He just happened yeah. to get his rank, you know, quicker than me. But you know what I mean? That's oh, not totally. just a caller, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like that it's, translates to real life too, right? Uh -huh. When you like meet somebody or, or even uh, maybe even like a celebrity and you're like this person's a, like a god or exactly like, put them up on this pedestal dude i know and yeah. then you finally you meet them you talk to them and you're like oh it's just another dude just like me exactly and that's dude jujitsu has done man it's helped me the way that i look at people and yep. just life in general so much like what you just said was a perfect example man I, I don't even look at like, like I've met a lot of celebrities and stuff since I've moved out here yeah. and um, a lot of like big name fighters. I've right. trained with a lot of, uh, you, you know, high level fighters and it's like I used to get starstruck if I ever if I ever met a celebrity or, or a, a popular fighter that I watched in the UFC. And now yeah. I'm just like, it's just another person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's funny, like I was a real big fan of uh, Ben Saunders growing yeah. up and um, I was watching him all the time. And now he's just one of my good buddies. He's such a it's chill like, dude. Yeah, he is. He's so cool, dude. He's like he's one of my good friends. Like, he and I drove up to the UFC just a couple weeks ago together. He invited me to go with him. And um, was that for was, uh, Ilima's fight? No, no, it oh, was. Wait, no, that's, um, that, that was Bell. Sorry. No, yeah, it was uh, Dillashaw versus Garbrandt, 227, I think, oh, UFC yeah, 227. Yeah, so, like, one. I'm driving up there with him, and, like, he and I sit down, and there's, again, there's all these fighters that I've grown up watching mm -hmm. and stuff I'm seeing in the crowds, and I'm just like, this is so weird that, like, <laughs> I'm just, like, I'm just, they you know, are friends with them. Yeah, yeah, they're just, uh, it's, uh, they're all just people, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, jujitsu's definitely helped the way that I look at, at people and you know life in general like yeah. i said and know. i say this all the time jujitsu helped me in the business world tremendously yeah and i'm sure you'll find that throughout your life you'll get into these situations and you're like i got through this because of jujitsu because i'm able to think clearly through chaotic situations yes exactly and i'm a it made me a way better problem solver yes i can just uh, it's it's funny man like you do jujitsu and um you know, the people who don't think this way, then they end up quitting. But like to get better, you just have to think like, damn, how'd that guy just tap me out? Well, I exposed my my leg to him and he, you know, or he, he took my back because I because I did this or, you know, you made a wrong move and then you just think, okay, so what do I got to do to not let him do that again? Yeah. And you have to go through those steps and you have to break it down. You know, it's just this like the these little micro yeah. um, details that you have to make and uh, or changes i should say and it and it helps you with everything else in life you know what i mean even re relationships for yeah. that matter yeah. like <laughs> like totally. dude it's helped me become a better boyfriend too yeah. seriously you know it's like it's well, crazy well, your girl like, trains too right yeah she trains dude she's a savage she's, really yeah she's <laughs> a blue so belt cool. but she's she beats people up all the time she's pretty good what's <laughs> that like dating somebody you train with Does it's cool man i've never done it before so yeah. um yeah, I just uh, we actually met at the gym like uh, about two years ago is when she came to the gym and started training. And she and I were just good friends. Like as soon as we met, we were always real cool with each other. And we started training with each other more and more and then started dating. And I, you know, I've had to coach her through a lot of like um, adversities and stuff like that. She'll she gets bummed out because she's still in that you know, she's still kind of in her baby stages, you know, yeah. she's only been training for like a couple years. A bad day at jujitsu so, will bum you out so Hell hard. yeah, dude. And so she's like, I was doing so good. What the fuck happened? Uh huh. Yeah. And that's a, another translation to life, man. Exactly. Where you're yeah. like, I was doing so good. Why did I just have a bad day? But it's like, you just got to roll with the punches, man. You're going to have another good day. You don't have to get bummed out. For sure. And and yeah, and like, I, I would have to explain that to her so much. And she's getting much better at understanding it. But, you know, she would have uh, plenty of days where like, you know, she'd be crushing people all week. And then maybe that Thursday or Friday, she just, she got beat up and tapped out a couple times by some people. And like, it would be like even a higher level, like dude who tapped her out. And I'm like, Hey, that guy's good. Yeah. Like, don't be bummed out. That <laughs> yeah. dude is good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you should, like you should expect to get beat by him, you know? But that's so, a beautiful, be beautiful thing about jujitsu. that It'll grind that out of you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, and, or, or you'll just get spit out the other side. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen a lot of people come in with that at, with that attitude attitude and they they gets worse and worse and worse and they they end up like leaving yeah you know and it happens real quick it, exactly but. it dude and i see it all the time yeah. man it's like you either you either get humbled and evolve and you figure out like okay 
I just got to take a deep breath and mm -hmm. realize that this is a bad day. I'm going to learn from this and I'm going to get better. A hundred percent. I just got to stick, stick to the grindstone and just keep doing it. Or you're just going to say, fuck this. Like this sucks. Yeah. I'm never going to get better. And then yeah. you're going to, and then you're going to quit, you know, and I've seen it happen plenty of times where guys will come in and it's mainly the people who come in with like a cocky attitude to begin yeah, with. I'll yeah. see, I'll see a lot of like jocks come in, you know, like mu yeah. muscular dudes who look like they probably were athletes in high school, maybe yeah. lifted weights a lot. And, um, maybe even a wrestler sometimes. Yeah. Even like, wrestlers, yeah. it'll happen, you know, and, um, they'll like my, uh, my coworker, he's one of my best friends. His name's Gabe. He's like, He's this skinny, nerdy looking little redheaded guy, and he'll just strangle the shit out of you. And I, dude, I've <laughs> like, seen this him. Was hard talking dude, about it's him so earlier. funny, man. I'll see guys <laughs> coming in. And it's like, if they get beat up on by me, it's kind of expected because I, you know, I'm a I'm a bigger You're guy. You're not a small and, dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got like tattoos and stuff. Yeah. And I, yeah. I look like I could beat you up. Yeah. But like <laughs> this guy, he doesn't look like he could do anything to you. They probably look at him like, this guy's an instructor. I'll kill this dude. And then yeah. they roll with him and then they, he chokes the shit out of him. And, <laughs> and then they're like, wait a second, I underestimated him. Let me try. I get yeah. and they just get choked and then again. they get choked again dude <laughs> awesome. and it's like and dude uh then they end up never showing their faces again it's so funny to see that man that's but that's the beautiful thing about yeah. it it's like um it's like a douchebag filter you know yeah. what i mean like you can't you, you know there's just if if someone's good at it it doesn't matter what they look like or their right. size or how strong they are or how skinny or big they are that you know if they know what they're doing you're gonna get fucked up by yeah. them so yeah well yeah. like another side to the coin of that that coo that kid who's unconfident, maybe a little nerdy, just unsure of themselves, that turns into this confident killer. Um, the other side of the coin is that jock jerk guy who comes in, and all of a sudden it's ground down to actually a respectable human being. For example, Matt Secor. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Who, who uh -huh. is like he's actually competing in the the upcoming middleweight CJJ at EBI. But okay, he, gotcha. He's, he's from my side at, at my schools on the East Coast. Gotcha. But when when I joined jujitsu, I think he he had just gotten his purple belt and he was still like, I talk about Matt being a jerk so much on this podcast. <laughs> it's, like, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. He's been on the damn podcast. Yeah. We called him a jerk on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. So it's okay. It's yeah. But he became like this respectable, like really awesome human being who like now runs his own school for and sure. teaches kids and like does a lot of stuff for the community. He's still a jerk. <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll never grind that out of him. But uh -huh. jujitsu made him this really good guy. And yeah. You might not have found that before that, which is yeah. really intense to see. I, I kind of even feel that way about myself a little bit. Yeah. Like I said, you know, when I was younger, um, just like being ar around the wrong people, you are who you hang out with. You right. know what yeah, I mean? So, so like, true. it's not that I was necessarily like naturally that way, but I was hanging out with punks. So I kind of naturally became a, a punk myself. Yeah. I was a little prick, you know? And, yeah. Um, Amen. And uh, yeah, but amen. slowly but surely it, you know, I've been humbled by jujitsu a million times. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been beat up by guys half my size and not only jujitsu, but boxing too. You know what I mean? And, and Muay Thai and everything. So yeah. it's like, and slowly but surely I, I got humbled and became a respectable human being that, you know, I'm a, I'm a lot different than what I used yeah. to. Yeah. So yeah. This is good. Yeah, yeah. Quick question. How many cups of coffee do you drink in a day? Um, let's see. Okay, let me count for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I like this. I had uh, I had two this morning before I left the house. Uh -huh. Um and I had two more at the gym. Yeah. I had and then I had a half cup right before I came here. So like like four and a half cups of coffee. Awesome. Is that is that pretty usual for you? Yeah, it's pretty usual. I see Steve drink a lot too. Yeah, yes, Steve drinks a lot of coffee, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he's got he like and kids both, and shit. Dude. Uh huh. Yeah, he's got kids. He's up early. And he stays up late. But... Need the caffeine. Yeah, yeah, dude. So I and honestly, man, I probably drink too much, but I can't help it, dude. It's so fucking good. And yeah. So yeah, yeah. I've never found the limit where it's too much. I mean, yeah. I, I've I I've done this, but I don't think that's. I still My don't think it's too I, much. I, I know when I drink too much because I start getting migraines. It's, it, <laughs> For sure, and it happens slowly. Where it's Just like drink also, another cup and it'll go away. It doesn't work like that. For <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. Jeff. All right, Jeff, you you ask the question. All right, every single episode we ask this question, and for, sure. um, for uh, someone in your position who you know you enjoy competing, you're now a teacher. You're te you're, you're imparting your knowledge on other people. You're still training hard every day, mm -hmm. multiple times a day. What fuels you to keep doing it? What fuels you to keep going out there? Well, it's funny. Uh, people will say to me like. 
you know, family and friends will be like, you're so disciplined, you're so disciplined. I'm not disciplined at all, okay? I'm one of the least disciplined people I know. I'm obsessed with it. Ha. I'm just obsessed with it. That's all it is. I'm addicted to it, you know? And if it wasn't this, I'd be fucking addicted to something else. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably be in trouble for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, I'm just addicted to it. I, I can't explain it. I, I just, I fucking love it, man. I, I, uh, I, it, it drives me to keep going. It's like I need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I don't have it, I don't feel like myself. Yeah. That's the only way to put it really is. That's a great as answer. As simple as that. Yeah. And, and I mean, you knew as soon as he was done asking the question, you're like, I'm oh, obsessed. Oh, yeah. I'm just obsessed with it. That's it's cool, that's man. a very simple answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's um, I like I if I don't do jujitsu for a few days, um, man, it, if it fucks with my head. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's, that. I think that's, that's good for anything in life. If yeah. you love something, obviously go and do it. Lose but if you really it. love it, lose yourself in it. Yeah. yeah. Become obsessed with it. Exactly. You're only going to get better. You're only going to love it more. Uh -huh. Your life is only going to be better because of it. Exactly. Yeah. Like I that is uh, like the saying uh, from Miyamoto Musashi and knowing one thing, no 10,000. No 10,000. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the, like, what uh, was the, the foot, foot clan from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Um, every journey starts with a single step. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, tattooed yeah. on my foot. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Charles Bukowski, I think his name is. Yep. Um, what's that? What's that saying? If you love something, let it kill you or yeah. something like yes. that. Find yes. Find something you love and let it It'll kill, kill you. you. Yeah. yeah like, it. It's true, man. Just fucking absorb yourself in it. I'm all banged up, dude. I got injuries all over my body. I wake up hurting every day, but yeah. I love it. It's just yeah. part of my life. I keep training and I train through injuries. I probably shouldn't. And the older I get, I'm probably going to have arthritis. And I think about I'm, that. I'm going to be time. banged I, up. He, he knows. I talk yeah. about that. I have, I have joints that just ache every day, but I don't care, dude. I love it. It's a, it's, it's my life, man. It's so awesome. you got that it's nice so West fun. coast marijuana to get you through. So Goddamn you right. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. fine. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> so if, um, if our listeners want to follow your journey, uh, what do you, do, do you social media? media? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, you? just Sloan climber on Instagram. That's put that uh, right in this episode. S L O A N C L Y M E R. Cool. And, uh, Sloan climber on Facebook, you know, excellent. So, the fuel by death guest. Excellent. All right. Thanks for having us, Liz. This oh, was thank so cool. For Thanks for yeah. letting me participate in your class. I can't believe I'm saying thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I barely made it. Actually, I didn't quite make nope, it. Nope, you didn't. But you did well. You did a good job. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so you're teaching here at Poway, but you have other locations that you're you're teaching at. You have all these schools that you're, um, I guess cultivating at this point. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been fortunate that I have a business partner and that Eddie Bravo has been gracious enough to share some of the talent that, that he's put out there with the black belts. And as a result, we've been able to kind of do a pairing with MMA and Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai and all, just integrate all of it into one at different locations. Yeah. And so as a result, we like, we have Richie and Gio and yeah. they just breed great talent. They're able to just make this really strong competition team. And as a result, we have these really talented guys that are up and coming mm -hmm. and the, the people that just, they want to make a career and make a life out of it. They yeah. love it so much. And they're so grateful for everything they've learned that they want to go and they want to teach other people. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we were able to open up multiple locations and, and take over San Diego County. Yeah, so Richie, Richie. How many locations in now? total? Four four locations yeah. in total That's now. so awesome. That's so, and you teach at all four locations? No, uh, primarily just at the Poway J location, but I one. just bounce between you the other ones and checking in and training at the other locations. Oh, wow, uh, that, that's, that's great. And I mean, not only being able to train as much as you do and compete as much as you do, but I mean, from the teaching side of it, that's got to be so a lot more rewarding, I would think, right? Like, absolutely. Uh, one, because you get to see all different parts of San Diego County. At yeah. least, like before, we were just in, in Mission Valley, so you only kind of get to see the people that are there and, and their goals. But the more that we branch out into the county, we get to see all different people from all walks of life, from all experiences levels, from people that have never even worked out a day in their life to other people who are really looking to compete and then want to follow in a, a professional career. So we get to go to all these different locations, different personalities different inputs from everything and just makes people that are participating in all of it they can go to every location and get like okay well they're a little smaller so maybe that's good for me or they're yeah. longer this is good and you get all these different experiences for the same move but from a different perspective so it's yeah. great for not only for us competitors but also for the members that are coming in and want to learn something new yeah how much do you teach a week I teach six days a week, so Monday through Saturday. Wow. And you and I would assume you train six days a I week? I also train six days, yeah. six or seven days a week. <laughs> Do you sleep? Well, that's what Death Wish is for. I don't need <laughs> sleep. And <laughs> scene. I said it wrong. <laughs> Knock that one out of the park. I love it. I love it. Jeff, no more setups. Okay, okay. I'm no done. More, I'm no done. More I'm, done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, 
I also want to talk about, um, since we've talked to you, uh, which we had you on last season, that was an amazing time, and we got to talk about your career. And one of the things we talked about was how you were really championing the idea of being able to fight at the weight that you're comfortable in. And and we even said, you said it on air. You were like, if this ever happens, you're going to become a killer, and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and it just happened. You just fought at that weight, and you crushed. It was so exciting, by the way. So exciting <laughs> to you. watch that. Um is it vindicating now that that is now in the sport and you can fight at that weight? Yeah, you know, I really wish it had come so much earlier in my yes. career. Just because I spent eight years of my career fighting in a weight class that I didn't belong in, 10 pounds up. Yeah. And I mean, I had great opportunities and I would never take that back because we probably wouldn't be where we're at today as far as females in the UFC. Uh, yeah. Um, but just now it's just, it's wonderful because yeah. I know that not only am I competing against women are, that are actually in a proper weight class, not like before where I'm like, oh, I'm still 135 and you look like you're about 160. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like, oh, 125 is 125. Maybe they go up to 135, but that's not, not a big deal. I'm not, not really worried about that. Right. But we're competing against people on the same level and that's so nice. And not only that, but I feel better at 125. Yeah. I actually have to do a weight cut, yeah. which is different for me. Um, but also when I go into the cage, I just feel lighter. I feel faster. I feel healthy. Yeah. And at 135, I didn't realize at the time that I felt sluggish. I didn't realize until I actually went to 125. Wow. And now I can see the difference. I'm like, I really shouldn't have been going at 135. 125 wow. is perfect. So your weight cut must not be that intense then. No, not that intense. But a little bit? I'd say a little bit because I've never cut weight before. But yeah. anybody watching would be like, oh, you make it look so easy. And it's definitely fine. So I wouldn't say it's intense in that I just make sure the moment I get that call for the fight, I'm cleaning up my diet. Yep. So as before, I'll be like, oh, it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm craving ice cream. Well, I'm going to have some ice cream. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I'm in fight camp, I'm like, no. no. I get one day of ice cream and that's it. And I have one cheat meal a week. Yep. And, and that's a huge difference. At 135. I had Biscoff every night, and if yeah. I wanted to cheat and have some food here, I could. I still maintain a clean diet, but with with I could like enjoy this and not be concerned with it. Yeah. And 125 is like, oh no, you're strict on it, which is a huge difference. Yeah. Whereas like three months out, it's one cheat meal every week. One month out, nothing. Yeah. And 135, I was like, I had a cheat weekend and a cheat meal during the week, <laughs> and then two months out, I had a cheat day, and then one month out, a cheat meal. That's a huge difference. So I'd say it's more intense in that way, yep. but healthy i just feel so much better do you think that's what's making you faster and more efficient at this weight class is more of a clean diet not because you're necessarily lighter i think it's a little bit of both okay i think at 135 i was just holding on to, to too much mass which just makes you slower and yeah. makes you fatigued and then also i was still eating clean it was just you know i take an entire week and enjoy myself yeah and that's definitely a huge difference that i've noticed too is i feel so much more clean and i think that is absolutely contributing into being faster and being healthier at 125. what's a cheat meal look like Every week's different. Every week's different. <laughs> it's good. It keeps it you active. know exactly. So I have cravings throughout the week. My biggest thing when it comes to cheat meals is because I am a foodie. Yeah. Is the deal is is if I can make it, it's not a cheat meal. Like I, ah, I want to. Yeah, nice. I want to be able to go to a restaurant and pay for something that I can't make at home. The other issue is is then I'm like studying whatever it is I'm eating. Like, can I make this at home later? <laughs> and then I'll try the next week. Like, oh, I'm not going to go out to eat. I'm just going to try and make it at home. So as the rule is, is I'm not going to go to fast food because you can just purchase that and my in microwave it right? Yep. right so i want something that's actually going to take some intricate work maybe some ingredients that i don't have so for me like usually i'm craving steak and potatoes i'm, yes. I'm just a Same. good old yes. irish girl steak yes. and potatoes in that yeah. way <laughs> uh, but it, it'll it vary it's usually if it has garlic it has steak and it has a carb i'm happy i'm pretty yeah. content with my cheat meal <laughs> that's, awesome. that's awesome do you have to completely cut out carbs to make like 125 no not at all no okay cool no no i exercise so much and just it, my resting metabolism i think i burn almost 2,000 calories just resting wow. so when you add in all the working out there's no way if i if i took out carbs i'd probably just be bone there'd yeah. be nothing on me <laughs> yeah well that's i tried to do that once where i you know i was doing a lot of strength and conditioning and then i i I've done uh, ketogenic diets before a few times and I was like, let me try it out with the strength and conditioning. And I think it was like two, three weeks in, I hit a rock bottom yeah. real hard. And carbohydrates are really important to like keep that endurance up mm -hmm. and keep you not only feeling good, but you are able to perform at your peak performance yes. over and over again, which you really get to find out what you're made of at that point, you know, instead yeah. of trying to die on a diet at any point <laughs> and what's surprising is that 135 is actually where i tried to cut out carbs yeah and that's when i was kind of like doing these drastic things like let me eat salads and i couldn't understand why i wasn't having fuel and my mind wasn't quite there yeah. and uh, you know you'd think that well you should be doing those little tricks at 125 yeah. but what i found was the opposite is i wasn't eating enough i wasn't giving my body the nutrients it needed to get mm -hmm. through all the workouts 
So before I'm like, oh, I'm having to work hard. I'm going to work eight hours, train eight hours a day to, to make 135. 125, it's it, it's easy because I'm like, oh, I've already figured this out. I've already made all those mis mistakes before. And the reality is, as often as I train, I eat carbs about four or five times a day. Yeah. It's just wow. small portions. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. I want to get back to talking about your school a little yes. bit more. Um, <laughs> we've seen a lot of really awesome success come out of your 10th planet schools. I mean, we've seen you succeed. We've seen, you know, the Martinez brothers mm -hmm. crush out there. Gio oh, yeah. and Richie are just, they're phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but also we've seen uh, Eileen Malay McFarlane, who's just a killer out there. She looks good. What, do you see anybody else up and coming out of your, out of your schools? Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot. We're a huge competition school, and it's not yeah. really that we push necessarily for competition. It's just all of our instructors are so actively competing. And we always tell our students, just give it a try once. Just yeah. see if everything that you're learning in class, if you can apply it under pressure. Yeah. You don't have to make it a career. You don't have to go any further than what you just do once. Just once just to see if you can still apply it. And then what ends up happening is we just end up harboring uh, this camaraderie of a competition school. And yeah. so everybody wants to go out. And then before you know it, like you go out. When we go to a competition, it's not like, oh, it's just two people competing. We have 30 to 90 people competing. Wow. And we go out and we just mob everything and take <laughs> over. <laughs> so every time so we cool. look around, they're like, I hope 10 Planet is in here. I'm like, oh, sorry, we're a little bit late. And they're like, oh, are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> Did you have to bring everybody? And we're like, well, two of those people are just watching. They're not competing. They're injured. It's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and so when you have that type of environment where it's just one person encouraging another, sharpening each other, making each other better, it just goes to show that we just start putting out more and more talent. Well, it sounds and everybody like it builds a really great camaraderie. It does. It says, like, we have so many kids where the parents are like, look, we don't want to compete. It's just not a thing. We're like, hey, absolutely. You don't, they don't have to compete, yeah. but we're going to warn you right now. They're going to go with all these other kids and they do compete. They're like, no, they won't want to. It's like a month later, you're like, okay, so I guess we're signing up for ju a jujitsu tournament. And, yeah. and it's just one of those things where you just, you want to see it. They look around, they're like, well, that person's competing. Well, that person's doing this and look how they're a step ahead of me. And so it just makes everybody like, well, maybe if I compete, I'll, I'll go to the next level and I'll be able to be better and nothing else, just applying it live in the school. Yeah. And so before you know it, almost every, almost every single person that walks through the gym ends up competing at one point or another. That's intense and i've yeah. been to a lot of jiu-jitsu schools and i haven't really seen that before yeah. and i think that breeds success it does all around because not only are you yourself competing but the people around you are competing and you're all learning new things and you're teaching each other and it and i mean we're, we're seeing the 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 fruits of your labor at this point because we're we're seeing all these successes coming out of your gym is that what you can chalk it up to is all, all yeah. this competition yeah absolutely i mean one of the greatest examples is uh alima pearl and i we all just got done competing right yeah. mine was was just a month ago and so i'm like oh, okay i can kind of chill because i have my reception going on at yep. the end of the month the wedding going on at the end of the month so i'm like oh, i could just kind of chill into it don't want to be the fat body going into it but yeah. i can just relax because i already like let the ufc know right. nothing competition wise we're not going to start anything until after it Okay. But of course, like I'm back in there because somebody else has a fight. So I'm making sure that I'm making improvements to help them get ready. Right. And that's what ends up happening is somebody yeah. else is like, well, I want to help my teammate out. Even if I don't want to compete, I want to be better for them yep. because I want to see them succeed. And that's what ends up happening is everybody builds these friendships and these families mm -hmm. and they want to see the success of everybody that they start competing just to help somebody else out. Uh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. I, I really hope that this mentality influences other schools because like you said, like I, I've, I'm, um, uh, a, a fan of this I was like I watch him and I learn everything from him you know and and I've heard him talk about the, his school like that he used to go to and it was virtually nobody competing you yeah. know and I, and I feel like not even from a competition standpoint but you guys are a family unit at this point yeah and I think that's like a well-oiled machine of a school and I think other schools should really look at at that and 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 take from that I, do, do you think that's going to happen do you think you're going to influence you know I would hope so but I think there's a few things that come into it one uh one of the things that's difference about our school is we we kind of fall under the 10 planet ebi rules mm -hmm. so when we're competing it's not for like the point system that you'll see other schools right. do yeah so and that kind of harbors a more competitive nature because you're going in for a finish you're not going in just to play points right and so when people see that they want to work that much harder to be able to complete that and mm -hmm. to be able to perform in that same way so we harbor more competitive people uh and the other thing being is just just the way that we go out there. It's just, we are always facilitating bringing people in. We're a lot more welcoming and we don't charge people, like our competitors, we're not charging them extra. But like, oh, let me hold past you. Let me help you with this. It's like, hey, I care about you and I have a skill set that you don't have. Let me help you. Yeah. Other schools don't. It's all about the profit. It's all about making money. Yeah. So as a result, you don't have a high competition school because they're like, well, they're just gonna charge me if I try and ask for help. 
and we're not one of those schools. There, there's another school that I've been to, and we're like, okay, well, you showed us this. Well, how do we escape that? They're like, 100 bucks, I'll show you how to escape that. What? 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 Uh, that's and, so and insane. And that's actually pretty common when you go to other schools. And we're not, we're like, okay, yeah, I can show you that. And of course, you know, like we also have to make money, but, right, but it really comes to us wanting to help each other. When we have, when I have a student that's hungry and they really want to learn something, even if they don't want to compete and they're like, I, I, can you teach me that? I want to understand that more. Before I know, I'm like, oh, I just killed an hour of my time. What am I doing? Like, I didn't have to help you out. Yeah. And it's just, we want to help our students. We want to see them succeed. Mm -hmm. And so we do everything in our nature to try and do that and just watch for their success. And other schools may not have that same thing. I can't speak to them, but I feel like that's probably what it is, is it's more about money or they just don't have the energy or the time to be able to give into their students. I, I think that's important is what you're doing because I mean, I mean, take it from any teacher standpoint, like, like sitting in, like you're sitting in history class and you're learning about World War II and it's like, well, I want to learn more about, you know, what happened at the end of the war. Well, if you pay $50, <laughs> I'll tell you who won. And it's like, why do I have to wait for this? Like, I think, I think knowledge should be if you are like you said if you're hungry knowledge should be readily accessible for that yeah. and i think that's that's commendable for sure yeah. um uh speaking of competition though uh i we talked about this before we started recording i want to talk about um this and I, i'm gonna get it wrong but uh, oh, I'm, I'm uh, excited. um <laughs> the, what you're about to do which is a team competition yes um can we can you explain a little bit about that because it seemed really interesting yeah so i'm still learning about it so okay. this is the first yeah. time in in Always growing up, I was always involved in team sports. I okay. mean, there's very, one, the school that I went to, I lived on a small island in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So there just wasn't a lot available as far as individual sports, just plain and simple. Okay. And so of course, like, I'm just a competitive athletic person. So if that means being on a team and I have to kind of, oh, okay, well, everybody's not pulling their weight. I'd rather participate in a sport than not. So all throughout my career, I always felt like I would give everything I had for it and never be on a winning team. No matter how much effort I put in, how much I busted my butt, running as fast as I could, going for everything I do, I could score as many goals, defend as many goals, do whatever. It didn't matter. We always lost the game. And so leaving high school, I'm like, you know what? I'm never doing that again. I'm so sick and tired of team sports and putting in all this effort yeah. that I'm going to go to individual sports, which is kind of what drew me to MMA. It's like, yeah, it is It is a team sport. You can't, can't spar yourself. You can't right. train with yourself. You have to have somebody. But at the end of the day, when you go into the cage, you're competing only with yourself yes. yeah. and against another person. So this is going to be that first time where I have to go into a team sport where it's all about the whole, all the points, all the submissions of one team going against everybody else. But I'm fortunate that I'm going – my team is like, oh, okay, the greatest guys we have out there. It, it, we're going with Richie, with Gio. Oh so God. we're going, exactly. So it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, well, I'm the little brown belt amongst all the black belts going yeah. into this. And even the females that, that are competing are all black belts. But the good thing is, is, is I compete against black belts all the time. Yeah. And I have them at my aid to make me a better competitor. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that being challenged because I don't get to, re I don't get to compete against many black belts in jujitsu. Right. And this uh, is a, just a straight jujitsu. Just straight jujitsu. Yeah. Okay. So this would be one of the first times I actually get to compete against them. Usually it's against fellow brown belts or, and you know, you want to, but this is a good chance for me to challenge myself and to do it in a team environment where I get to be right next to them. Usually I'm watching Gio and Richie on TV mm -hmm. or I'm watching them on Fight Pass like, go guys, you got yeah, this. Right. Or I'm out in the stands like, you can't hear me, but just keep passing. <laughs> it's been the first time we were like, hey, yeah, good yeah, job. So and you're right cool. there. I'm like, oh, my turn. Oh, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Is that more pressure for you? Yeah, of course there's more pressure. Yeah. One, I'm the only brown belt on the team. Everybody yeah. else is black belt, so... It, there comes with the pressure there. You want to make sure that you're delivering the same performance and skill level as the people there before you. Yeah. yeah. Which, of course, like, I'm not at their level, but that's where I'm striving to be. And this is a good opportunity to show that that's what I'm working towards. That's so cool. Is it a, it, does everybody on the team fight the same amount? Or it, is it like an elimination? Or So I think I want to say that it's, oh, I need a little so more into it. It's a pile of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like Russia. They just do anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like Team <laughs> MMA. Everybody just fight each other so crazy. just hold somebody kick oh the other God. person yeah. <laughs> that's are you crazy. kidding me that looks so awesome oh, it looks so <laughs> would much you do fun. it yeah. oh I would absolutely do it are you oh, kidding yeah. me wow. now, now let me just clarify okay. with my team mm -hmm. and with the UFC let me probably not would I yeah. do it oh in a heartbeat okay, that looks yeah. like so much fun yeah like, I don't know about that oh my but. God. but that isn't <laughs> what this competition is no 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 this is actually the same format as a normal Jiu Jitsu tournament uh -huh. and that you're going to be one competitor against another submission wins go on EBI rules so there's uh, you go into overtime and that's what bases each one and so each team can collect points at the end of it you accumulate how many submissions how many overtime passes etc to get your actual group winner wow do wow. you know uh the other teams that you'll be competing against i don't i do know that all the other women are, are black belts and it's for the women it's 205 and below 
So there's a possibility that yet again, I'm back into being the tiny person oh amongst gosh. all bigger girls. But honestly, like I compete against heavyweight and jujitsu. It's, it's supposed to be about no matter the size that you can apply it to somebody that's larger or smaller than you. Yeah. And in practice all the time and going against heavier people. So it won't be a big deal, mm -hmm. but it'll still be interesting. It's the first time I get to go against other black belts in a competition which is yeah. going to be great, other than MMA. I mean, it happens in MMA, but it's yeah. not the same. It, it it, it, the whole dynamics are completely different in MMA. Yeah. I mean, you see black belts all the time in MMA, and they, sometimes they don't. It doesn't help them at all. No, yeah, and I have seen plenty of that, where somebody is like fourth degree black belt, and they go in there and they're like, oh, they're going to be so sick with you, and you're like, well, how did that person just, I don't understand. <laughs> and it's different when there's punches and there's elbows involved, yeah. and that's the threat. You're willing to give up a position that you would never do in jiu-jitsu because the wrist is like, well, I could get elbowed and cut in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Do I really want to do that? No, nah, they can go ahead and pass. It's, it's fine. I think I heard a <laughs> saying once, uh, punch a black belt in the face and he turns into a blue belt. Something like that. So, uh, so every punch. So punch, uh. a blue, uh, punch a black belt in the face becomes a brown belt. Punch yep. him again, becomes purple and so on and so okay, forth. Okay, so yeah. five punches. We're good. Good. Right? Yeah, we're golden. <laughs> All right. Even turns. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's so cool. This might be a really naive question. I love these. Um, go for it. Will it... Will this be televised? Will people be able to watch it, this? Yeah, so it's supposed to be on, I want to say, Flow Grappling. Okay. okay. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm they sure do. I'm sure you'll be posting about it. Yeah, we'll, absolutely. We'll be, we'll be resharing as well, so that, that'll be good. Um, that sounds really exciting. Do you think, after doing this um, for the first time, do you think you'll do more of it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm always looking to compete in jiu-jitsu. Every time that I compete, though, I have to get permission from the UFC. Oh. oh and so that's always the thing. And, and I totally understand. Tough? It, it can be difficult. So yeah. the deal with the UFC is they want one that they want it to be like usually ranking activities. So usually IBJJF tournaments. Okay. Yeah. Which for me personally, I hate IBJJF mm -hmm. because it's just points. Yeah. And you'll see people that like they pass your guard, they stand back up. There's weird pass rules your guard. too. And to me, like if you're going in there to show your skill set as a competitor in right. jiu-jitsu, show that you can submit somebody. Right. It Don't shouldn't just be like, point. I got a mount and I just stand back and run away. Like, all you showed is that you can sit down and stand up a lot. Like, that doesn't really show anything. No. It's not jiu-jitsu. Um, so I like the format for EBI, where it's all about submission. It's not about yeah. points. You either submit or you don't submit. End of story. You either escape the submission or you don't. That, to me, is a lot more appealing. And that's yeah. more to the nature of who I am. So even with those, like, they're good on those type of competitions. But I always have to get permission. And sometimes I can get shut down. Like, I want to do, uh, after an injury a few years ago, I'm like, can I just do, like, a Logo Naga or Grappling X just to get back into the tempo of competing? It's been over a year. Right. And they're like, no, sorry. I'm like, wow. wait, what? That's and crazy. and I understand because if you get submitted in Naga, that's anybody can enter into it. It must have happened a few times before they. Yeah, and when you go for something like IBJJF, you have to be a f it has to be another purple belt or right. so something along those lines or somebody right. that has a skill set. In the same sense, if it's an invitational only tournament, then it's other top competitors. So if you're yeah. losing, it's probably to somebody that's a high level competitor. Right. So I can understand that it takes from the quality of the UFC, right. but it makes it difficult for those of us who are just trying to get just get back into the flow of competing. Yeah. yeah. What about EBI? They must be more open to that because EBI is tied to fight. Yeah, EBI, is, I was yeah. I was totally set to do this last EBI. And I was like, oh, another history making. Yes, Yeah. I'm in for it. Super excited. And then I got a call, a call from the UFC like two weeks out from the competition. I've been training for months for it. Mm. Like, hey, we got you for a fight. Like, well, my priority always goes to that. Right. But, but at least the training doesn't isn't in vain, right? Exactly. Because, yeah. yeah, and it definitely helped. Yeah. I felt like my, yeah, absolutely going into it. I definitely felt like my jiu-jitsu was a lot stronger and I felt more comfortable with it. Yeah. But of course, when you're looking towards one goal, I'm like, ah, the girls were scared of me. I was so excited for it because a few of them, they heard they're like, oh, this could be, they're like, oh yeah, we're not going to do the tournament. We're out now. Uh, so I was like, yes, I'm in their heads. Like yes. I totally have this. And it, it's just, like I said, it's about competing. It's all these other girls in this format. This was going to be all 10 planet girls. For the most part, they're going to be competing and the high level ones. So I'm like, yes, I get to really see against another 10 planet. Cause sometimes I'll go against more orthodox girls Yeah. and the styles are completely different. So you kind of have an idea of what yep. strengths and what weaknesses are going to go to your advantage. When it's 10 planet to 10 planet, you're like, this is really about who's faster, who's stronger and who really knows the material. Yeah. So yeah. I was really looking forward to testing myself against the other girls. I was a little bit bummed to, to not participate in that one. Huh. How much of your style is 10th Planet? Because it's a little bit of a wacky style. And you it may is. not have started in I didn't Planet. at all. Yeah, I spent. And that rubber guard to mission control to zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I don't remember the name of all of it. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. That was impressive. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, it's a mixture. I'm more and more, I'm, I would say in jujitsu when it comes to swapping styles, because I did. I came up for years 
and traditional. Yeah. And even that, uh, our one of our coaches that was our jujitsu coach also competed in MMA. Yeah. So what he would drill into during jujitsu, he'd be right back in MMA practice saying the same thing. So yeah. it was drilled in and it was just so ingrained that some things are just innate in me that I can't even stop it. I'm like, stop doing that. It's yeah. so bad. You don't need to do it anymore. I'm like, go to 10th planet, go to 10th planet. <laughs> so there are certain things that it's just natural where I automatically instinctually go to what I learned is uh, orthodox jujitsu. And then other things where I'm like, yeah, look at that. I just hung in sync with the 10th planet. It's paying yeah. off. So I say right now it's about 50-50. Interesting. Well, I think we're seeing a lot of the Eddie Bravo 10th planet system. The, the I, I, I can't tell if like the moves are really like crushing people or it's just something that they haven't seen before and they don't know how to deal with it. Do you have an opinion on that? I, I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. I think one, when it comes to traditional jujitsu, it's been taught since jujitsu began yeah and here you have this new style that only started really occurring since mma became popular and it was yeah. designed specifically for mma yeah so for those of us that compete in it we're actually have a have a jujitsu design just for that completely unique from anything else and also it's just one they put some cool names on like you said zombie new jersey new york mm -hmm. things that you can remember yeah. as opposed yeah. to swim underneath step four and you're like that Oh, I already yeah. forgot. Yeah. You know? So that just helps facilitate. You get cool names for it. It looks yeah. super cool. And it's just, it it's different so that it just ties in. And I felt like a lot of stuff in traditional jiu-jitsu, when you got into positions, it required flexibility. Yep. Whereas 10th Planet, it's about angles. Like, oh, you, you can't necessarily be, because trust me, I'm like the least flexible person in the system. Yeah. Touch my toes, not happening. <laughs> so when they're, they're like, oh, get in this position, I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't do that in traditional jiu-jitsu. There's no way I can't do that. Huh. And they're like, no, 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 it's just about this angle. And they do it, I'm like, wait, what? Huh. I can do it? Oh my God, there's no way. Like rubber guard was never something I got into before because I thought it required flexibility instead of it was just angles. That's all it was. Really? Now I'm like, yeah, rubber guard all day long. Okay. Have you ever seen rubber guard, Jeff? You've showed it to me. Yeah, it's... It's like wrap yourself up in a pretzel. Put right. your legs over your own head, basically rubber yeah. guard. <laughs> Which yeah. is like totally up my alley. I can I can deal with flexibility, but... No, no, I can't touch my toes. So that's definitely not up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> but you have no problem doing rubber no. guard and all no, that not jazz. At all. That's so cool. Yeah, and like, for instance, I spent... I don't know how many years trying to get the darts. Yeah. Right. So all these years, and I was just convinced, like, oh, my arms, I'm just, I'm just too girthy. Yeah. I just can't possibly get the darts. Yeah. There's no way. Never, ever, ever. We drill in tenth planet. And I'm like, I can get it. I don't feel like it's. I'm good at it just because in my mind. Yeah. All those years of doing traditional jiu-jitsu, never able to get a darts. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get it. Fast forward about two years ago, and I go into a competition. I won every single match by a darts. Wow. After wow. having never, I'm like, this just happened again. I'm looking at my wow. my coaches, and they're like. Yeah. Are you sure? I'm like, <laughs> I've never even landed that in practice. How am I landing in competition? And that just goes that like the muscle memory and, and the drilling that we do in 10th Planet just instinctually comes through. Yeah. And everything that I thought I couldn't do, they've proven to me that I'm completely wrong. Yeah. All these things, I'm like, I can't get to that. I'm not flexible. Like, hold on a second. Just let me show you. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the drilling system uh, for 10th Planet seems really intense now. Just which is really cool. It's very flowy. There's mm -hmm. a lot of moves in between. Does that help you out a lot too? Yeah, absolutely. Because things that they do is just what's considered a warm up. Just basic yeah. white belt, which if you're coming into the system, you're like, that's just your warm up? Yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. That's I thought that was the entire class. Yeah. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. Just the basic warm ups instinctually build that muscle memory for just things of just getting out of something, getting into something. Whereas before it's like, okay, this is the move you're taught for the entire class. That's just the warm up on how to build your body to have a, a memory for things that are going on, yeah. which just helps it that much more. It makes 10th Planet so much better than others. Oh, that's so cool. Do you have anything, any plans coming up for your MMA? fights with the, the UFC? Or are you starting to line stuff up? What's that look like for you? So I let them know as soon as I get out of the fight, like, hey, I'm ready. Please give me a fight. Um, but one of the things I know when they give me permission to go compete outside, that probably means I'm going to wait. My yeah. guess is that everything's waiting on the Shevchenko fight. And the results okay. of that one will put me in, in running for a contending spot. Ah, that's yeah. so exciting. You're going to crush. I know. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. I see it in you. You've <laughs> got the hunger. It's so awesome. And, yeah. I mean, how much longer do you think you have in the UFC and MMA and stuff like that? How much longer do you think do you plan to compete for? Until I get that belt. Yeah. Excellent. That, that's what I'm gunning for. Excellent. Well, do you get the belt and then just leave? I mean, that's always a possibility. No. Uh, <laughs> just, just run out the door. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> got it. Thank you. And I'm out. Haha, <laughs> 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 jokes on you. No, honestly, I, you know, my goal has always been for the belt. Like once I actually started competing and I thought that, wait a second, I, I can actually do this. 
that's all I'm looking for is to be able to achieve it. Because once you're number one, you're number one. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you you lose whatever, but you reached that point. Yeah. And that's all I'm looking for is to always compete even to get the best in the world, which is why I've stayed in the UFC. I could go to other other fight organizations, but I want to go and test myself against the best. Yeah. You know, if you're going against number one and you beat them, then you've been doing yeah. due diligence and you're number one. As opposed to where I'm like, ah, I could fight in a local show against somebody that has a year of training. Yeah. yeah, you should beat them. Absolutely. Yep. If I don't beat them, then that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah. So I want to be in an organization where I'm challenged every single time I go in there, which means I'm going to keep fighting into the UFC until my body just doesn't let me anymore. <laughs> that's so cool. I can't wait to see what's coming up. Oh, me <laughs> too. And 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 on the 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 training and the teaching side, you're you're there's no end in sight for that. Where do you see no, that? Not at all. Where, where do you see that going in the next couple of years? You know, Poway was kind of my little baby and, and branching out and trying to build up my own school because I, I have my business partner and we have the other locations, mm -hmm. but this is just my own little baby that I'm trying to build up. Yeah. And and my goal is to eventually down the road to just make this a bigger facility and to really start breaching out into the rest of the community and start really doing community outreach and having a connection with the schools. Because I know before when I was at Mission Gorge, one of the things I established is we were doing like low income families, doing little projects for them so that they could still be sponsored to be able to come in and train in the gym for the families that couldn't do it. But the rule was, is like, we're going to mo monitor your grades. We're going to check them with your school, check them with your parents. And I really want to build this back up and also do that with the community here with the military personnel. Because I know for myself, yeah. when I got out, I, I was for over a year looking for a job not only when i was in but when i got out to no to no success wow and that's you know that just makes you like if you're set on i want to get out of the military and i want to follow my dreams and you get out and you're like pop 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 one dream after right. another is going away it, it, it leads to a lot of vets to be depressed and that's when you see them commit suicide or they go back in not because that's what their heart is and what they want to but because the safety net they know is there yeah. and they're like okay well i'm not going to try and really branch out and you see those vets that are going back in, they're unhappy, they do the same thing, they end up committing suicide when they're in, or just spending a lifetime and they're unhappy. Right. So I really wanna do some community outreach for the youth that we have, and then also for the vets to show them that you can pursue your dreams, find a home, find a place for you, and the avenue that, like, we find a lot of vets and we'll be able to connect with them, and if nothing else, I'm like, okay, well, you're looking for a job, that's your strength, cool, I know somebody over here. If nothing else, for networking to help them, but really to get them in so they have a focal point and they have a place to be able to vent and to be able to hit things and do some of the similar things they did in the military without any repercussions for their actions. Yeah. And so hopefully that's that's where I'm going down the road is be able to do more community outreach and integrate that into this. That's so cool. That's incredibly inspiring. Honored. It really is. And, and I, I wish absolutely the best for you because I think like I, I think there needs more of that in the world for sure. Um, and between that and how exciting it is to w follow you through your career, it, it, I, personally speaking, it feels great to just be able to give you a little caffeination and help you out <laughs> with that. Because uh, More than a little. <laughs> <laughs> how much coffee do you drink in a day? Uh, well, like I said, I do my French press, so, you know... I don't really read instructions and the warning label I just flip in the other the direction. Other yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I made so mud. If, so if it says like yeah, exactly. It's pretty much mud is what I made every morning. Nice. I don't really read it. So it's mud in the morning, mud in the afternoon, then one more mud at night. Yeah. Wow. It usually sets me throughout the day. <laughs> mud throughout oh the day. my god. I wanna go off the beaten path just a little bit. Um, I see you posting a lot about C B D oil. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about how that helps you through training. I hear a lot about it through like, um, you know, helping in uh, inflammation and mm -hmm. stuff like that and recovery. Does that help you a lot? It helps so much. Uh, yeah. So one of the things just you experience with a lot of vets, one, we're beat up from everything that we're doing when they're in the military. Yeah. And the other thing is most of us struggle with sleep. We have usual social anxiety, depression, all these things. And CBD is one of those things. It's more natural that helps you. So for sleep, I'm, I, I really hate putting stuff in my body that's unnatural. Yeah. Right. So like, oh, OK, well, I'm banged up from practice and I'm swollen. We put ibuprofen. Let's put 1600 milligrams in because that's what the military tells you. Just more Motrin, right. ibuprofen. And the dosage as high as I was getting is I was taking it each go every four hours, 1600 milligrams of ibuprofen, uh, no. which is just destructive for your liver. And it's that causes so inflammation itself. And it does. It causes not good for you. No, mm. not at all. Right. And so I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to put this in my body. It's not good. But cutting that out, it only comes with other issues. So I was like, okay, what can I find? A few people suggested CBD. And I was like, uh, I, I don't know. So, so much stigma behind it, right? Yeah, there really is. Because most people think that I'm going to get high if I do CBD. And I was certainly one of those people where I'm yeah. like, no, I'm good. Like, yeah. I, that's not my thing. Uh, that's not my thing. Like, no, Liz, uh, trust me. I'm like, yeah, not so much. Right. I'm good. Yeah, with those Martinez. Yeah. Brothers, <laughs> you know? Now you're getting into yeah, trouble. Yeah, hanging here. out on 7th Planet, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but what really took was that there was like a week where we had a heat wave and I was just 
almost barely sleeping for an entire week. So oh. I was in zombie mode. I could barely stay up. It was just not going good. And so I was like, look, just try CBD. Just give it a go. Passed out solidly throughout the night. Good eight hours woke up. I'm like, oh my God, I finally slept. Yeah. And then as I noticed and I started using it more, I'm like, oh, wait a second. Like, this doesn't hurt and that doesn't hurt. Wow. And I'm going out in public and I'm not having these issues with people. It's not bothering me as much. Yeah. And depression wise, it helps that. So it was just helping in so many ways. And then when I really connected with hemp meds, that's when I yep. found the full extent of it. Because I tried and I was like, I kind of noticed a little bit here and a little bit there. And hemp meds was the one where I took it and I like embarrassingly so clonked out on my couch. I'm not a sleep on my couch person. And my wife and I were both like, oh, okay, we'll try it. Sure, it's just going to make it. And we were like, pass out head to head, <laughs> wake up at like three o'clock. And we're like, ah, oh, 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 did yeah. we just sleep there for six hours straight? I'm like, all right, let's go back to bed. I'm like, oh, okay, this stuff <laughs> oh really God. works. Yeah. And then in every day, like I had... I got concussed really bad in practice. And you can notice like different things that, that come with it. Did some CBD, no headache, no nothing. Next day it was completely fine. Wow. We flew to Montana and we ended up having a 5 a.m. flight. Yeah. So we had to get up at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We were attending a wedding, so we didn't sleep that night either. No sleep. Of course I get home like, oh, I have a horrible headache. Yeah. CBD, before I know like an hour later, I'm like, oh, man, I feel good. I'm like, oh yeah, I did CBD. No headache, no nothing, I feel great. I noticed when I uh, landed, and we might have hit up a dispensary. I won't, <laughs> I won't admit to anything. <laughs> All right, that's fine. But we, I picked up some CBD, and I noticed that I wasn't so affected by the travel, which is, which is something I, I always am concerned about with with MMA fighters because they're traveling everywhere and like all over the world. When did they get there? Are they yeah. recovered? That so I imagine CBD helps a lot out a lot with that. It does, and uh, so the last few fights I've been using CBD, and I had thought that I would have to cut it out because it does have uh, cannabinoids. Yeah, and right. so when you do a test. T, they don't differentiate between they'll THC just, and just, CBD exactly. Yeah. It's just a pop. Yeah. It's like I'm not getting high off this stuff, but it doesn't. They're not. They haven't got so extensive a testing yeah. to be able to to separate the two. Right. Yeah. So I knew I'm like, okay, we'll I have to cut out CBD, and that means cutting it out like two or three weeks. And like I said, that was what was getting me to sleep through the night. That was right. what was helping the inflammation through training. So every fight, I was noticing it. Thankfully, this last one, um, hip meds, they have a THC free line. Oh, nice. So I'm like. Oh, I hope it really is THC free. Didn't pop on the test and was actually able to sleep fight week, which was so great. Because wow. every other fight week, I'm like, yeah, this week is horrible. Uh. I'm not sleeping, jet lag from flying, all these things. I can't sleep because my body hurts because I have bangs up here from, from all the training camp. And it was great. It was golden for the for the whole thing going to this last fight. Oh, that's so cool. Awesome. I definitely want to dig a little bit more into that. That's cool. Yeah, that's check it work. out. Yeah. <laughs> and have meds. I will check that out. I Very love cool. Have meds. Sure. Well, Liz, we're really excited to see what's next for you. So much. Um, I, that community outreach stuff. I can't wait to see how that turns out. And we only wish the best for you. And I can't wait to see you crush some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. always great. I hope that jujitsu tournament uh, is as awesome as it sounds. And we'll be cheering you on the whole way. Thank you so much for having us here. Yeah, uh, it you. was an honor to be part of your classes <laughs> and get smashed for a bit. I'm still sweating. Yeah, no. I'm sorry I'm making this room so hot. It's totally my fault. But it, uh, thank you so much for having us here. This was, this was amazing. Yeah, thank really you was. for coming out. It was finally great to meet face to face. Yeah, it's Definitely. always better that way, yeah, right? Absolutely. Always, always. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Deathwish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.